Okay, again, I'm gonna have to make this like a sec separate video or something. I'm getting ridiculous with all these segments. I, I went to my dad's and I came back. We had a nice visit. Oh my gosh, he has the cutest little kitten. He has this little kitten. It's so cute. It has these little whiskers and a little face. Oh, he's so cute. I said, where did you get the kitten? He said, I don't know. Somebody throwed it out down at the end of the road down yonder. He's so cute. Oh, he's so cute. Oh. Now, I did not bring the kitten home with me. Are you shitting me? I already basically have four cats. Like, nah. It's so cute. I said, what are you going to do with the kitten? He said, I reckon I'll keep it. I ain't got no choice. I said, well, you know, we need to make sure the kitten is, is cared for. Um, so, I'm a little concerned. He said it had a bit of an intestinal issue. And my dad is not one of these people to take his pets to the vet for every little thing. I said, well, at least try some dewormer or something for this poor little baby. I mean, you know, poor little kitten. It wouldn't be, if, if I rescued this cat from his house, it wouldn't be the first one. Two of my cats came from up there. People, because my dad lives out in the middle of nowhere, people are really bad to, to just abandon animals. Down at the, he lives on this long, winding road, and people are really bad to just drop kittens, puppies, dogs, cats. They just abandon them. They just dump them. It's really shitty. It was the same way where I grew up. We grew up out in the middle of nowhere and people would just abandon. They would just bring animals and just leave them in our driveway. And you would come out. It was usually overnight and you would get up in the morning and there would be, there would just be a box sitting on the steps, which I assume originally contained the litter of puppies or kittens. And the little babies would just be all over the yard just whimpering or meowing and just pitiful and man whole litters of puppies I remember this one time somebody dropped off a litter of six or seven little puppies and they had the mange really bad they basically had no hair they had mange really bad and at that time we had I think a couple of dogs and our dogs got mange um, we had to have the pound come get the puppies, and then we had to have our dog treated, our dogs treated for mange. Oh my God, it was such a pain in the ass. I remember my dad complaining a lot. He was very unhappy about the whole situation. Um, just terrible. And two, back then, the pound in the county that I lived in was not funded well. They didn't have much in the way of like a facility or a staff or anything. I think they had like one guy that serviced, that would handle the entire county, one dude. And he had his little dog kitchen truck, you know, with the thing on the back, like the little, the little doggy prison on the back. And sometimes we would call and say, hey, you know, somebody's dropped off a bunch of puppies or kittens or these dogs or this cat. We need you to come get it. And sometimes it would be several days before they got out there or even longer before they could come get it. And my brother and I would get attached during that time, but we couldn't keep all the animals. And I remember on many occasions just bawling my eyes out when I saw that dog catcher truck coming up the road, I would start bawling because I knew he's coming to take this little, these puppies I've gotten attached to or this cat or this dog or these kittens. And I would just cry because I knew that that shelter didn't have many, they didn't have really anywhere to keep any animals. And if somebody didn't come get them and adopt them within a day or two, they put them to sleep. I mean, they just didn't have any room. It was a tiny facility. Fortunately, since then, they, they have a much larger facility now. And I think it's a no-kill shelter now. I, I think it's a no-kill shelter. It didn't used to be, though. Back when I was little, it was not. And they had very little space for dogs and cats. So if somebody didn't come adopt it within a day or two, they would put it to sleep because they just didn't have room. And so, and I knew that was gonna be the fate, more than likely, of whatever dog or cat or the puppies or the kittens they were coming to pick up, that was gonna be their fate. And it just broke my heart that we couldn't keep them. But we, I mean, I understood, you know, my, my parents explained it like, we just cannot keep all of them you know, if we can find a home for them, great. If not, we're going to have to call the pound. I'm sorry. I understood, but it still made me really sad. Anyway.
anyway, um, I'm going to get some dewormer for the cat and some food. And it's a little kitten. It's, it may be eight weeks old. It's, oh, it's so cute. It's adorable. It's so fluffy. A little fluffy cat. And my dad has this dog named Rufus. This little black and white dog. His little ears do like that. They kind of, the, the top kind of flops down. He's so cute. I love his dog. Anyway, Rufus loves this kitten. Loves the kitten. He licks it and he carries it around like a puppy. He, he, he's very gentle with the kitten. and But they play together. You know, not rough, but he, he plays with the kitten. He's very careful with the kitten. So cute. Oh my goodness. He's very delicate with the kitten. Because that was my first question when he said that it, a kitten, you know, he found a kitten at the end of his road and he took it home. I said, what did Rufus do? But Rufus didn't hurt it, did he? No, no, Rufus is good. Rufus is, you know, really good with him. Okay, all right. Just, all right. I was worried. Because Rufus can play really rough. Rufus is young. He's He might be, I don't know. He's not two years old. He may be a year and a half, maybe. He's still relatively young, and he's very playful, and he plays a little rough sometimes, so I was kind of concerned for the kitten, but the kitten is fine. He's adorable. He's so cute. I love cats. I love dogs, too. I spent most of my visit sitting there petting Rufus. Rufus came in with us, and he sat beside me on the couch, well, like down on the floor, leaning on me. You know, I was sitting on the couch, and he was leaned up against my leg. And I just petted him, and we, we talked and visited, had a very nice time. I had a tomato sandwich. My dad had a fried bologna and cheese sandwich. It's the first time I've seen fried bologna since the last time I made it in a video. I did, I did fried bologna sandwiches, shit, I don't know, a year ago. Yeah, it's not something I eat very often. When I was a kid, I used to eat it all the time, fried bologna. You take a piece of bologna. And you cut some slits in it because when you fry it, it curls up. But if you cut it, it won't curl up. Fry it. Slap it on a sandwich with... I always put mustard on there. And, uh, yeah, I would like... I like to toast the bread. If I'm feeling extra fancy, I'll toast the bread. Really good. So, but now I gotta head home. But I did stop back by the produce place... Um, partly because we ate my tomatoes. I bought my, my yellow tomatoes. We ate those. I, I, I contributed to that as my, my contribution to the sandwiches that we had for lunch. My dad and stepmom and me. I said, I have tomatoes in the car because they didn't have any tomatoes. I said, I have tomatoes. So I stopped back by there and got some more. I got two more yellow tomatoes and that pretty light orange uh, flower thing I showed you. I got to thinking on, about it all the way. Uh, leaving my house, I thought, you know what I should do with that? Instead of putting it by the mailbox, um, I want to plant it. I want to do a little thing, like put a little border, like get some of those little terracotta border pieces, and put it around by uh, pink dogwood, and plant some flowers in there. And I thought I'll plant. I'll, I'll get another one of those pale orange flower thingies, um, and then pick another color, like do two of those, and then do two of another color. So I was looking and they had some that were purple, they had some that were pink, but I thought, I want something that goes with this pale orange. And they didn't really have anything. I was kind of looking for something yellow, but they didn't have anything that really stood out to me. But they did have some of the same kind of flowers in just plain white. So I just got two things of those. So I'm gonna do some, put two things of white in there and two of that pale orange. I think that'll look good. That's, I think that might be like a kind of a, a weekend project for me and some children I will I will draft whoever my son is my older son's working all weekend he's gonna be going all day Saturday Friday no Saturday and Sunday he's working like all day so I'll get my younger son to do it if he can tear himself away from Minecraft for five minutes or he's been playing grounded a lot lately let's take him away from that for five five or ten minutes like come out here help me put this stuff in the ground because you have to dig a little trench to put the little you know the little terracotta pieces in there but it'll look really pretty it'll be just it'll match what I have around the uh, the mailbox and I need to get some more potting soil actually I have some actually I do I have almost an entire bag of potting soil already I'll probably need another bag though I'll get a second bag 
Oh, it's gonna look so cute. So I have to go get the uh, ter the terracotta stuff. I need to kind of measure the area to get an idea of how many of those to buy. Cause they're, they're slightly curved and they're made to kind of fit together, you know? Yes, oh yes, that sounds like fun. I'm gonna do that. So I have extra plants in my trunk. I took one of my Aldi box bags and I opened it up and just set them down in there. Um, and my dad gave me some real butter. He has a friend who has dairy cows and they have started making butter. They've started making and selling butter from their from their cows, you know. So he gave me two things of uh, homemade butter. I've churned butter before. I have. It's hard. It's hard to do that by hand. Churning butter. Whew. You want to build up your triceps? There you go. Churn some butter for a while. You won't believe it. It is insanely. It's a really good tricep workout. <laughs> it is. A little bit of bicep, but not much. Mainly triceps. It's tough. Um, but I've done it. I've churned butter. Not in a long time, but my mom wanted to, she got it in her head, she wanted to make butter. I think we did that once. And we, she and I took turns churning it. And my, bu my brother took turns. He churned it. I churned it. My mom churned it. I think we all decided that it was more trouble than it was worth. It's hard. If you're doing it in a churn, you know, manually, that's hard. I think it was harder than we all thought it would be initially. Yeah. So we didn't make any more after that. Because we used to get our milk straight from the cow. This was not store-bought milk. You can't make butter from store-bought milk. No. I grew up drinking milk straight from the cow. Raw milk. I didn't. The only time, the first time I ever had store-bought milk was at school. Shit, probably I probably had some in elementary school. I imagine I did. I remember just thinking it tasted really weird, and it still does to me. It tastes like chemicals. Real milk does not taste like that, y'all. I don't know if you know that. Raw milk doesn't taste like that. No, it's better. It's much better. Um, but yeah, I, we had um, we used to buy raw milk from this elderly couple who lived shit 20 miles away we go out there every friday night my mother and i would go out there to their to their house and they had a little farm tiny little farm and they had some dairy cows and i would go out there while my mother visited with them i'd go out i'd go over to the barn and i would talk to the cows and they were very sweet nice cows and uh i remember the lady had the perfect voice for asmr she had the most delicate gentle voice and sometimes i would go in there and just get in she had this recliner I would go in there and get in the recliner and just listen to her talk and I'd just fall asleep listening to her. It was so relaxing the way she talked. She just had this soft southern accent. She grew up in the same area I did, but she was, you know, an elderly lady, very sweet lady, very nice. Um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, so we took some of their, it wasn't the skim milk, whatever milk, shit, I don't know, buttermilk, I don't know. But my mom told her one day she wanted to make some butter, so we bought whatever the hell we needed for making butter. I don't know. If you ask me to make butter now, I wouldn't have a damn clue. But no, raw milk. So I, we're not dumbasses. I mean, I talk slow, but I don't think slow. Yeah, I was not trying. We were not trying to make butter out of damn store-bought milk. You can't do that because store-bought milk just tastes like chemicals to me. Mm -mm. No, and. I always knew when spring was coming because the taste of the milk would change. You could tell when they were going from eating hay to eating grass outside because you could kind of taste it in the milk. You could sort of taste it. It changed the flavor of the milk. And I'd take a sip. Mama, it's springtime. <laughs> the milk, it tastes like grass. <laughs> There's a little grassy taste to it there for a little bit. <gasps> a Volkswagen bus. Oh, my God. There's a blue Volkswagen bus. Oh. <gasps> That's the first one I've seen in weeks. A little Volkswagen bus. It was a bay window, but it counts. I love driving down 52. This is pretty much where I always see Volkswagen buses. I never see them anywhere else. Okay, sorry. Butter. Yes. No. Um, raw milk. Grew up drinking raw milk. And we would get them in these big jars, like these gallon-sized glass jars like you get pickles in. And then we would wash them and take them back on Friday and get, you know, give them, turn them in and get more milk. We did that for years, all the way up through high school, when I was in high school. 
We did it all my, throughout my entire childhood. We didn't have store-bought milk. But then, I think it was sometime during high school that they, the elderly couple was no longer, they no longer could keep up with, you know, the dairy cows and everything. So they kind of retired. And that's when we had to start buying store-bought milk. I was disappointed. It's just not good. I'll drink it, but I, I'm not crazy about it. I don't really like it that much. So anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about quiet people. You know, something that bothers me. Now this may strike you as hard to believe. You might go, get out of town. When I'm around people, you notice I'm always alone when I'm talking to you. When I'm around other people, I don't talk much. I don't, I don't really say much. Um, I try to, you know, if I, I, if I'm in a group of people and it feels like the conversation is lagging, I'll, I will, I will talk more, you know, if I feel like, well, somebody needs to contribute something at this moment, I will, I will say, I will speak up. Typically though, I just like to listen. And one thing I've learned over the years is that a lot of people out there don't have anybody to listen to them. And when they find somebody who will listen to them, they really take advantage of it and they will talk your damn ear off. Any quiet people out there, you ever had your ears talked off? <laughs> yes. More times than I can count. Yeah, there are a lot of lonely people out there. They just want somebody to listen to them. That's all. They don't, they don't want money. They don't want stuff. They just want you to listen to them. They want somebody to listen. Because a lot of people do a lot of talking, but they don't do a whole lot of listening. So, I try to just let people talk. They seem to like it. And if you want somebody to like you, one of the best things you can do is just let them talk. Just let them talk. I'm not saying stand there and just don't speak. I mean, you know, speak when it's appropriate, but just listen to them. People love to talk about themselves. Honey, they do. Have you noticed that? I love talking about myself. I could hear at least two of my ex-husbands going, Yeah, I know that's true. Self-centered bitch. And you're and you're stupid too. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um Yeah, people like to talk about themselves. Give them the opportunity to do it. They will really like you. They will come away from that encounter going, Man, and they are really cool. They will think of you as a really cool person. They're really cool. So just let them talk. Um, yeah, but one thing that bugs me, though, about being a quiet person, and I, I wonder if I'm the only one. Have you ever experienced this? Like, you, you're, you know, if you're one of these people, you just don't talk a whole lot, especially if you're in a crowd, because I, I really don't. I just kind of keep quiet. I'm just kind of observing and listening to everybody, you know? Have you ever noticed that if you do try to speak up, people talk over you? Like, you really have to speak up. You have to about shout. It's almost like people get so used to you not ever talking that when you do, it doesn't even register with their brain that you're talking. Like, it, their brain just can't comprehend the thought of you speaking. You know what I mean? I've experienced that in numerous scenarios with different people. If I try to talk, I could be right in the middle of a sentence and somebody else will just start talking. They'll just talk right over me. Like I'm not even saying anything. And it's annoying as hell. And most of the people in the group, back, it's like they don't even notice. There might be one person in the group who will, who will look at you like, sorry. But most of them don't even notice. It's so annoying. I find that I really have to raise the volume of my voice uncomfortably for people, for it to register with them that I'm talking. It's weird. But look, talkative people. I don't know how many talkative people we have on here. The quiet people, when they speak, listen to them. Because if they're talking, they have something worth saying. They have something to say that you're going to want to hear. We don't talk just to hear ourselves talk like a lot of people do. A lot of people do that. They just don't know how to be quiet. If we speak up and say something, give us a damn minute and listen to us. 
shit. We have listened to y'all. Some of y'all, we've been listening to y'all for years. Years. I have people in my life that I have listened to faithfully for years. And I hardly ever say anything. I let them talk. I let them vent. You know, I will give them advice if they ask for it. But usually, they just want somebody to listen. And I listen, damn it. But when I have something to say, they just talk over me. Oh, listen to me. I listen to you all the time. Listen to me. But they don't. And it's annoying as all hell. I really have to speak up for them to even notice that I've said anything. So yes, chatty people. Listen to your quiet friends, co-workers, acquaintances. Listen to them when they talk. Which won't be very often, so it won't inconvenience you much. Just shut your yap for a damn minute and listen. Shoot. I don't know why. I've just I've wanted to say that for so long to somebody. Because I have that happen to me on a regular basis. I'll be in a group of people and it just irritates me to no end. And I will think of something to say. And we'll be standing, you know, like in the little circle thing that you do when you're just talking. And I will speak up and be right in the middle of a sentence. And somebody else will just launch into something totally different. Bitch. I know damn well you heard me. How did you not hear me? And then it will be forgotten that I even said anything. And then I get, I'm, then I'm kind of mad. I'm kind of discouraged. It's like, forget it. Fuck it. I'm not going to bother trying to say it again. I've tried several times to say something and I keep getting cut off. So you know what? Forget it. Just forget it. I'm going to go see if they have a dog I can pet or something. I'm just going to go elsewhere. Fuck these people. You don't want to hear me? Fine. I'll just go pet your cat or something. I don't know. I'd rather do that anyway. If you have a pet, if I come to your house and you have a pet, I will try not to be rude about it, but honestly, the entire time I'm there, I, I would really rather be petting your dog or cat. I'd rather be hanging out with them. Nothing personal, but if you have a dog or a cat and I'm talking to you, in my mind, I'm really wishing I could just go pet your dog <laughs> or your cat or whatever. I'd really rather just go do that. Because <laughs> I, I, that's just what I like to do. Anyway, I wanted to say that about quiet people because quiet people are not going to say it. So I'll say it. And quiet people, you know, we live in our head a lot. I know I do. I, I, I live in my own head a lot. And I, I'll zone out and I will be focusing on something that's totally unrelated to whatever y'all are talking about, I admit it. I, if the conversation is boring, in my mind, I just go somewhere else. I'll just think about something else. Um, but we have a very rich inner life or whatever in our brain. We have a lot going on all the time. And when we, when we speak up, whatever we have to say is probably going to be either really funny or really insightful or really interesting. It's going to be worth listening to. So do yourself a favor and shut the hell up and listen. Let us talk. That's, a, that's it. Thank you. That's all I had to say. I should stop right there, but I won't because it's a very important topic to me that I haven't heard many people talk about because we quiet people, you know, we don't complain much. I don't feel like we complain much. I, I don't think I do. But sometimes it just bothers me. Damn it. And it seems like as we go on, people have just become more and more self-absorbed to the point that they truly don't care what anybody else has to say. They just don't care. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't care about you, but listen to me. This road is very bumpy. Sorry. Yes, listen to me. And only me. Forever. Yeah, no thanks. I'm tired of that. I have, as, as, as I've gotten older, I've become more comfortable um, if I'm in a group of people, say I'm in a party or some sort of gathering, if I'm in a group of people and the conversation is just not to my liking, I'll just walk away. I will just wander off. I don't feel like I have to stay there. You know, if you're, if you're talking about, I don't know, shit, 
something that if you're talking about concrete or something that I just don't give a shit about, I'll just wander off. I don't feel like I have to stay. Now, when I was younger, I would. I felt like I had to stay and, you know, be a part of that conversation. I, not so much anymore. The older I get, it's like, I, I'm, I'm too, I'm too old for this shit, you know. I see the, the grains of sand slipping through the hourglass, and such as the days of our lives, and I don't want to stand, spend them standing here listening to this boring-ass conversation. I don't even say anything. I just walk off. Screw it. I don't care. Yeah, I don't feel like you have to listen. If I've had a couple of beers, I may just literally go, this is boring. Bye. I'm going over there. I'm going to go pet the dog. Ooh, puppies. Bye. Forever, I'm not coming back. I'm going to be with the puppies the rest of the day. I'm going to lay on the ground and do a puppy pile. Whee! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, listen to your quiet friends. If you're a yappy person, listen to your damn quiet friends. Let them talk. Ugh. Okay. I'm going to shut up and drive home now. I made it all the way to Stokes County. We're in Stokes County. Ring a ding ding. It doesn't look all that different. So far, it ain't looking like much. Pretty much the entire drive looks like this. Lots of trees, lots of speeding cars, and the occasional Volkswagen bus, which makes me very happy. So, anyway, this is it for today. It's still Thursday. I'm going home. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. I really hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you again soon.